Hey, and welcome back to... Did I really just spend $20 on 8 photos? The Polaroid SX-70, everybody's favorite notepad turned transformer that just happens to take instant photos. This thing came out in 1972 and it was manufactured up all the way until 1981 when Polaroid came out with the 600 series of cameras and film that inevitably replaced this. You all know the 600 series of Polaroid cameras, those nice hunks of junks that everyone from your grandma to that one girl you went to high school with had. But what makes the SX-70 so special? Is it because it folds? Because it takes SX-70 film? Because it tucks you into bed every night and tells you that it loves you? Well, let's find out. I brought this thing along with me on a photo walk with some black and white film. I also brought this Yashica Matt 124G alongside me to take the same composition twice to waste film. So yeah, took the same photo with both of these. Let's compare them. So yeah, it's voice over time, I guess. Don't look at me. Thanks. The first thing we'll talk about is sensitivity. SX70 film is a 100 ISO, both the color and the black and white. The black and white is a lot more forgiving, and this film stock is very hungry for light, and sometimes it struggles to find the right exposure, usually under or overexposing by a stop or so. In my case, as you will soon see, it seems to overexpose more than under. So this photo is definitely underexposed a bit. The whole left side of the frame is muddy and dark, but that's more because there isn't a whole lot of latitude with SX-70 film. And we're also introduced to our fun friend, the orange blob, at the top of the frame, which I believe is the rollers in my particular camera not fully spreading the chemistry over the negative. So the interesting thing about this camera is that it has manual focus and is fixed at f8. From here the camera decides how long the exposure is going to be. It'll be anywhere from 175th to over 10 seconds. You can see a fun little white blob in the bottom left which is a, another artifact from the rollers but other than that our orange friend is back and this photo is definitely overexposed. And a little shitty if you ask me. And I didn't really match up the framing all too well between the two shots. Sue me. So, other than the orange blob, I think this photo is actually really good. I mean, decent. Ugh. It's alright. Again, it's not the sharpest, and we do have another smaller, harder to notice artifact in the bottom center. And this is definitely the photo that is the closest to its comparing Yashika shot. So this shot right here was almost good in my opinion. It's definitely a little overexposed, but the bigger issue is the massive artifact sitting in the lower half of the photo thanks to my incompetent camera doing old camera things. I really don't have a whole lot left to say that I haven't already said. Wow, it's overexposed. Wow, it has artifacts again. That's cool. 
they're really bad this time, but cool, I guess. And no, I won't get this camera serviced. And yes, I am still going to complain about it. So I think we're done talking about this thing for now. I don't really have a whole lot to say, I guess, that I haven't already said before. Shit, I have two photos left. <sighs> wow, this photo is even more washed out than the last. This poor SX70 is really starting to struggle. It's definitely a fun camera, more of a convenient, smallish, not really memory type camera, especially if you have a lot of money and if $20 is worth the 8 photos for you. Some people have made some really nice photos with the SX70 and I'm astonished by how some individuals use this weird camera and its weird pros and cons to their advantage. I honestly really like the SX70, it's just not something I'll grab all too often, and I would like to do a small project with it at some point, that time just isn't now. Now a word from this video's sponsor. This video couldn't have happened without our sponsor, Brooktree Film Lab, your one-stop shop for film development and film itself. Brooktree has an ever-rotating catalog of film with film stocks coming and going. Brooktree also has a rotating catalog of apparel and merchandise. One of my favorite things that has come out of Brooktree is the Film of the Month Club. With one low price, you can get a random film stock to try, but also includes shipping, developing, and scanning. Brooktree has low development cost and returns high quality work. With a wide range of development choices and scan sizes, you can get pretty much anything developed at any size you need. Make sure you use the code CLEARLY10 to receive 10% off your next film development order. Ah!